right now, Pittsburgh's best sports show is about to begin. Call us or tweet us. We've got things to talk about on the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. Thank you very much, Ken Rice, and good evening, everyone. I greet you live here from the Fan Cave. The number to reach us is 412-575-2600. You can also hit us up on Twitter at KD Pomp at the Pony Express as Andrew Filipponi is live over at 93.7 The Fan. Andrew, good evening. And number one, your thoughts about Paul Skeens. Pretty much landslide. I mean, Jackson Merrill on another year would have won this award, I think, based on what he did. Jackson Churio is also a very good young player, but it was no question that everybody was talking about Paul Skeens. Your thoughts? Well, he did historic things, okay? Jackson Merrill had a big part in the Padres being a playoff team this year, but he's not the first rookie outfielder to uh, break in and be a driving force towards it. And look at Livy Dunn, by the way, Bob. Is that not just a romantic thing right there? She's more excited than he is well, in this video we're watching. No, you don't think so? No, I, they're both very popular. Okay. I think they're a power couple right now. It's one of the great rookie pitching seasons of all time. And I think even though he missed the first month and a half, that should have been rewarded by the baseball writers, and it was tonight. Yeah, now he's up for Cy Young, which is rare in and of itself for a rookie. He's to not going to get it. I understand that. But Got no hypothetically, shot. if he were to start this past season at the very beginning and got 10 more starts, say, or five more starts, and he still had the same sort of numbers because he was very consistent all season long. I think he would have definitely been very much neck and neck with uh, Sale or Wheeler or anyone else for that matter. He got a late start and it wasn't his fault. But the numbers suggest that he would have been that guy. I think he would have won it if he were here from opening day on. And the reason why I say that is because the award now is so numbers based in terms of some of the analytical numbers like war and things that go beyond just wins and losses. I hope you're all right, Bob. I heard a noise there. Are you okay? Yeah, the football just um, came down on behind me. Oh. I didn't well, even spike that's not it a bad or omen. No, no, it was fine. Oh, that's not a bad omen for Thursday night. Um, <laughs> well, we'll get some, to that in a minute. Some kooky things have ahead. happened in Cleveland, but <laughs> no, I think if he had had 30-plus starts, he would have won the award because even though he wouldn't have won as many games as Chris Sale, his numbers just across the board would have been better. All right, let's talk about the Steelers now. Big win yesterday, no touchdowns, six field goals. When you look around the AFC North, you can see that the kicking is a huge advantage right now for the Steelers. Uh, Tucker missed two, and if he had made those two, it would be a whole different game, I think, especially at the end. But also, you look at McPherson, he missed two critical ones at the end of a game. They should have won that game. They came all the way back. Burroughs had an outstanding season. has not much to show for it. And then Hopkins and Cleveland misses two as well. So... Um, your thoughts about that win and also this game because it has been a trap game before after two emotional and physical games like Washington and Baltimore. This will be a tough one. You know what? It's a game where if they lose it, I don't think I'm going to give them a hard time for it, Bob, because of what you just said. Uh, look at their record coming off of games against Baltimore. They're so not only emotionally draining, they're so physically draining. I think it just takes a lot out of them. You have to sum up the power to be so disciplined and to do the right things defensively against Lamar Jackson and so much sweat equity and blood, sweat and tears go into these games. I think it's hard to regroup, but I think it's even tougher when it's on a short week like this. And Cleveland looked like they had packed it in early against New Orleans last week, but I have a feeling they'll be up for this game at home because it's in prime time and it's against the Steelers. And I wouldn't be surprised if it brought out the best in them and I don't know, Bob. The Steelers have done so well here to get to eight and two, and they've won games like Washington on the road and Baltimore uh, yesterday. That if they were to lose this game, I'd have a hard time really ripping them for it. Yeah, and keep in mind that Baltimore went there and lost as well. So I mean, it can happen. And on a week like this, they have playmakers. Certainly, Denzel Ward has been outstanding, and others on that team. And we'll see what they can do offensively. One week you get. Uh, Jameis Winston with three touchdown passes, the next three interceptions. So it'll depend on what they do as well. We got to take a break on that note. We got a lot of people want to talk. We're going to do that when we come back. This is the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. We're live on KDKA Plus. James Sierra's uh, tweet of the night comes from Jason Mackey of the Post Gazette. Pirates have 
The National League Rookie of the Year, Cy Young candidate, unquestionably one of the best pitchers in the game. Eight hundred grand. If this doesn't scream urgency, I don't know what does. And That's I would agree point. with that. It is because That's a he, great point. not only him, but you have uh, maybe the best young pitching staff in all of the National League. When you pray, if if you're going to look at Bubba Chandler and think he's going to be as real as we think he is, they got some really good pitchers on that team. If you're never going to do anything to add to it right now you never will it's time to put the pressure on Bob Nutting to open it up bring in people and and supply you it's just like having a quarterback on a rookie deal you got a guy making 800 grand he may make 800 million the next time you see him so do something now I I couldn't uh, agree more with that Bob they need a first baseman so badly uh, Christian Walker's a free agent he's a Pennsylvania guy uh, he should come back home here and play first base. He's a guy that when he's healthy, hits 30 homers and drives in 100 runs like clockwork. You could set your watch to it. And so that would be a big right-handed bat you could put into this lineup right in the middle of the order, get protection for guys like Brian Reynolds, who badly need it. I think that that's spot on by Jason. You know, one of the things that should, I think, allow for the Pirates to earn back their fans' trust in light of returning uh, Ben Charrington and Derek Sheldon would be to make major improvements to their roster, but I don't think they will. I'm very, very skeptical and very nervous that it's not going to happen, Bob, and they're going to try to sell it as internal improvement is the way that this team gets better and wins in 2025. Yeah. Well, we've heard that before. It hasn't worked exactly right. You need outside help. Let's go to our number one Cochrane Go One Better caller of the night. We're going to be in with Chuck in Union Town. We haven't heard from him, and I suspect Chuck. that he wants to talk about Paul Skeens. Hey, Chuck. Yeah. The, yeah. Thanks both of you. It's good to be here. It's uh, it's good to be with you again. Yeah, Paul Skeens. I I think he's captured the one word he's one award he's going to win. He'll be in the Cy Young race, but he won't win it. Uh, but still, what a great year. But you 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 fellows and Jason Mackey are spot on. You know, it's it's if ever. I don't know what Benning is waiting for. This is now. Not tomorrow. The time to do it is now. No question, Chuck, and I think all of us feel that way. I mean, they, they have to do something here. They have some good young players. Uh, add to them. Uh, you know, fortify that roster. And there are people out there who can do it, and don't be afraid of the price tags that come with it because once in a while you got to take that. Even if they go out and, you know, Andrew, I was looking at the numbers. If they sign a guy for $20 million a year and then $30 million a year, whatever the case, they'd still be right in the middle of everything. It's not like that's out, outrageous spending. No, and uh, while we're having this conversation, the Dodgers are, I guess, meeting with Juan Soto. <laughs> so the rich could get even richer there. Did you know, I see the just... Mets? Your team offered him $660 million, or is that a, a report that is just floating out there? Because he's going to make well, that I'm not sort of. Seen, I'm not seeing that number, but that's. I, I heard that the number might start with a six or seven. Mm. You know, And again, that just goes to show you that there's such a have and have not uh, system in baseball, but you know they have not really spent ever more than around $100 million, Bob. If there was ever a time to do it, it's right now, given the way last year was a step back in the way that they have, I don't know if they're, to me their young pitching is not as good as we thought it was around the All-Star break because the way Jared Jones and Mitch Keller pitched in the second half of the season, but still, uh, you've got the Golden Goose and Paul Skeens, and you can't waste it. All right, back out to the lines. We'll go to North Huntington. We have Fred joining us right now. Hey, Fred, how are you? Hello, Fred. Hi, guys. Hi, guys. Thanks for taking my call. Mm -hmm. I wanted to talk about the Cedars offensive line a little bit. Uh, you have McCormick, you have Frazier, and you have Ciamola in the middle. I think that's a real solid three. The future looks bright there. However, Bob, you know, every game you see, there's a, it's a glaring weakness with, with the outside guys. I mean, Dan Moore and Broderick Jones, is, they're struggling. All the holding calls, uh, all the times the guy, guys get beat most of the time are with both of those guys. I know we're missing our number one pick for the rest of the year. Hopefully he'll be able to get back next year. But I, that's something that needs to be addressed, Bob, because well, it just doesn't seem like it's getting better. I think better. they are doing it, and Mike Tomlin is not giving up on Broderick Jones. I think it's a technique thing with him. Uh, when you get called for that many, it's right at the point of attack, which makes it worse, and it's pretty obvious to any official watching that you're going to get your hand in the cookie jar. 
I have no problem right now with Dan Moore. I do think McCormick is an absolute beast out there. I don't know if you saw, Andrew, looking at some of the uh, the All-22. He he is in the second and third layer, layer of blocking. He he not only gets right off the bat, he just keeps on going, and he won't stop. He's, he's a madman out there, and I like that. I thought the inside of the line just haven't been there on Sunday and seen it from up top in the press box. I thought the inside guys had a really good game. I mean, I think the strength of the Ravens with Ometa Buke and uh, Travis Jones is inside. And I thought that Frazier came back with a vengeance against the Ravens in his first uh, tussle with them. I thought McCormick probably had one of his best games. I thought Sayamalu looked like his old self. And I would agree with what Fred said. I thought the tackles were the more glaring issue, especially Broderick Jones. And Dan Moore, I think, has come back down to earth a little bit here after a hot start and looked more like Dan Moore. Although, Bob, I saw um, a projection from the website, the 33rd team, that said that Dan Moore is in line to get $17 million a year in free agency. Holy cow, <laughs> if that's true. Uh, I would never pay him that money, although well, what did he's Kevin been better Dotson than I get? thought he would be you know, this year. He, he left here, and all of a sudden, he got some big-time money, didn't he? Yeah, he got about, I think, $15 million yeah, I mean, the market year is for the big market. Kevin Dotson. One thing I'll say about Dan Moore, Pony, is that he's out there all the time. He, he's, he's a guy true. who's... He's, he doesn't miss time. He doesn't miss too much time anyway, comparatively, so that's good for them. Um, all right, back to the lines we go. Uh, Mike in Uniontown, line two is up next right here. Hey, Mike. Hey, Mike. Hi, hey guys. It's always special when you guys are on together. Hey, I want to ask you guys, what happened to Mike Williams uh, yesterday? I, I didn't even know he was playing. And I come to find out, listen to the radio, he was out there quite a bit. And one last thing, do you think they should use their tight ends more? Yes. What happened to him? They just didn't target him. He was in there for like, 20, I don't know, not a lot of snaps, 20, 15, whatever it was, Andrew. I was a little surprised by that. There, you know, He had a big play last week. I thought because of it, he'd get more playing time this week. The Friar Muth thing continues to be a puzzling uh, subplot to this season. It looks like Russell Wilson prefers Darnell Washington, which I like Darnell Washington as a blocker. I think the guy is still awkward at times and doesn't have the best instincts as a pass catcher, evidenced by that interception where he didn't even really jump for the ball. Uh, I heard he thought somebody was behind him who was the intended target of the play. Dude, you're 6'6", six, 6'7". Six, six, uh, if there's somebody behind you, Russell Wilson's so short, he can't see him, man. He's throwing that ball to you, so you got to give me a better effort there. Uh, I thought, Bob, Russell Wilson's preference to throw the ball outside and not to the middle of the field really showed up against the Ravens. And if that continues, I don't think that's a good sign for Pat Fryermuth in his role in the offense unless they come up with creative ways to get him the ball. Yeah, I agree with that 100%. This inside, you know, using the middle of the field. I mean, a lot of good teams do it on slant patterns, high or deep, whatever the case may be. Um, and the Steelers are just not doing that. Now the two to Washington were over the middle, and they need to explore that a little bit more. Back Bob, to the, Yes. No, I just want to say quick, I think Tomlin... I, I thought that Tomlin kind of made, uh, for him, a very outspoken comment about Russell Wilson today when he said he shouldn't have thrown that ball mm -hmm. uh, to Washington. And we know how much Mike despises turnovers, especially when it takes points off the board. But if you heard Russell Wilson after the game, and I know you did with Hoke, it sounded to me like he would do that play over again, that he would still throw right. it up there and want to give his, his tight end a chance. So I want to watch that to see that relationship between the coach and quarterback because I don't think they see eye to eye in one of the biggest plays in the game from Sunday. I also thought Wilson maybe caught right in the middle. Like he, he thought about throwing it away and also trying to make a play and he ends up throwing it in an area mm -hmm. he shouldn't have. So who knows how that really worked. But uh, yeah, that's that's a turnover. <laughs> Thank God, uh, goodness for uh, Peyton Wilson who came right back and made another. Real quick, let's go to uh, Josiah in San Antonio. Hey, Josiah, what's up? Uh, hey, Andrew, I got two quick questions. Points. Uh, number one is, why is Mika Fitzpatrick, I understand he's making a lot of plays on tackles, but I haven't seen him make any uh, interceptions like when they first acquired him. He just seems invisible from my interception standpoint. And if I can, I know it's a uh, rule against the show. Chris and Rich give me a hard time about bringing his team up in hockey. I just want to ask real quick, if you can give me a take on, on the Bruins. Uh, they're not responding to Montgomery. Postronaut got benched the other week. 
I mean, it just does not seem like they're responding to this guy. And it's weird because he's winning regular season games in the playoffs. He's a no-show. What do you guys do? Uh, I mean, first of all, the Boston's one of the teams the Penguins are going to have to play here in the next few years. They got a tough stretch of games starting with Tampa. Boston's just 8-8-3, eight, eight and three, I think, uh, last check. I don't – first of all, I don't think they have the same chemistry as they did. Um, you know, they uh, – it's early, though. I'm not going to write them off. They're a good team, Andrew. I, I, the Penguins, on the other hand, are dead last in goals against, dead last in a lot of categories. They're going to change that starting tomorrow night. It won't be easy. No, we're reaching the quarter point of the season here, and so this is when you really have enough games to take inventory or take stock of who you are, and you're dead on. They're one of the worst teams in the sport right now, Bob. They needed overtime to beat San Jose Saturday night. Yeah, blow a three nothing lead, and luckily to get one. If not, that even even with the win, it still leaves a lot of doubt in your head. We got to take a break here, Jack and Ron. Hang on, we'll try to get to you next right here on the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. KDK News at 11 starts momentarily. Ken Rice is on the anchor desk tonight. Ken. Bob, family and friends are mourning a Beaver County teenager killed in a crash. Plus, Westmoreland County School Board advances a plan for a new stadium and how soon this mild weather is going to be out of here and we could see some snow all coming up at 11. Bob, see you. Oh, my. I didn't want to hear that, but here we are in November. All right. So tonight, Houston is winning again in Dallas. Brandon Aubrey has a 64-yard field goal. Dallas is still winless at home. Uh, Jake Paul will have more wins than uh, Dallas will this year in Jerry's world. I mean, what's going on with them? And, and why is Trey Lance just – he's gone from a third overall pick – and now I don't even know if he's ever going to play in the NFL. In five interceptions in a preseason game, and San Francisco couldn't wait to move on from him and give the job to Brock Purdy, who was the last pick in the draft. Uh, that, that really started in the offseason when they made very few moves to make their team better, left themselves naked at running back, and lost Dan Quinn to, to Washington, Bob. And he's right there with Mike Tomlin for Coach of the Year. No question about that. And Houston needed that win. They've been kind of up and down. Uh, it's an AFC win, and that's the team that uh, I think everyone's going to have to deal with. So, Pony, thanks. Appreciate it as always. We'll see you again tomorrow see night. See you, Bob. All right, that's going to do it for us. Thank you for joining us. We'll do it again tomorrow, same time, same station, right here on the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. We'll see you. Bye-bye.